This is Andy Perrault for Boxing Social in association with Pursue Fitness Sportswear and I'm delighted to be joined by WA World Super Flyweight Champion Cal Yafai. Cal, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. That's good to hear. Obviously, it's been a while since we've had a chance to catch up. You're back now after another successful world title defence out in America against Norberto Jimenez. We'll start off there. What were your thoughts on your performance and your victory? Um, yeah, it's pretty good. I've done what I needed to do. Um, things are a bit... You know, going in my hands, uh, perforating both my eardrums and first time being caught. Um, it, was, it was good to get get them under my belt, let's say. <laughs> it was good and bad, but it was good to, you know, get through them kind of things and little scares and thinking, you know, having to think of other things while you're fighting. Like when my ears went, I'm having to keep my balance, tense my core while I'm thinking about what's coming back and what to throw. So, um, yeah, it was a bit uh, challenging sometimes, at times, but, yeah, done what I needed to do. Talk about those challenges, you know, you've just mentioned the injuries that you felt during the fight. What does that do to you mentally when you, when you see them progressing and becoming a bit worse as the rounds are going on? How are you trying to deal with that mentally? It's, it, is diffi- it is difficult at times, but then, especially with my hands, it's like, just get on with it. I can't do nothing. I can't... I, there's no point in me going back to the corner and going, oh, my hands are hurting. Because no one's gonna, no one can do yeah. shit off you, you know what I mean? It's gonna, you have to get on with it. But, um, yeah, the one in, in Providence, it, like, I was warming up, and then first right hand I hit the pads with, my hand was killing. And I was just like, I said to my brother, I said, my right hand's gone. And he was, he was panicking, he was like, he, you could see he was panicking, and I was just like, just get on with it. Can't do nothing now. But I just got in there. The first uh, three, four rounds were, were going to plan, and then I hurt my left hand, um, and I went to the corner. Then I got caught on my head, and then my, I got I got like coughed on my ears with the left hook and the right hook, and my there goes my luck, perforate both my eardrums. I mean, overall, how satisfied were you with your performance then? It was I weren't like hugely satisfied because at t- times I was thinking. I'm going through this, so just get on with it, um, try and get him out of there, try and end this early. But it didn't happen. But there's times where I was loading up a bit too much, uh, forcing the pressure, um, where I could have just relaxed, box on the back foot, and, um, and won easily that way. But I got the win, I won easy. Um, and it's on to bigger, bigger fights, because the, the, the shit thing about it is, you're going into these fights where, realistically, you know you're going to win. These guys, these guys are not actually that, you know, I believe they're not good enough. So, you get you get in the ring and then, as you're preparing for weeks, you know that you must win this fight because there's bigger fights out there for you. There more attractive fights, big paydays. So, you, you know you have to win it. So, there's a bit of pressure there as well. But um, I was glad to get it out of the way because now I want a, I want a big fight. How do you find yourself trying to motivate yourself in preparations for, for those fights in the way you know in your own mind you're going to be successful, you're going to come away with another successful performance, but how do you try and motivate yourself, especially when I remember speaking to you about your fight in Monaco, when some people actually thought that you was lucky to win that fight, and, and I've spoken to you about it before, how do you again? That was another fight where you just struggled to deal with motivating yourself, and you said it was a weird place in Monaco. It was quiet in a casino. Now, how, how do you try and get up for those fights? I think you just got to look forward and think what's 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 coming next, um, and what you what you got, you got everything. Um, you don't want to lose because you know you you get you get used to a lifestyle, um, and when you're getting paid good money for, for them kind of fights. You have to win them because if you lose them kind of fights, you're right down. <laughs> you're going right down there then. But yeah, it is hard. It is hard. But um, yeah, for my last fight, I got into great nick. I was in great shape. Um, a lot better shape than I was in the fight before. So that that was a good thing. That was a good thing that I, I, I was motivated. But um, I know 100% I need a big fight. You, you mentioned big fight there. You mentioned it earlier on in, at the beginning of this interview. Are you feeling the pressure now? We spoke about it off camera when I first got here. 
the way that some fans may perceive you over social media versus some of the stick you might get because you haven't had one of those fights yet. How does that affect you when you, when you see some of the comments that maybe those fights haven't materialised and people try and put the blame on yourself or try and create a negative atmosphere around what you have achieved as of yet? Um, I don't really let it bother me because I just I just do what I do. Um, at the end of the day, I, I, I train hard. Um, I've worked years. I've given 20 years of my life, to, over 20 years to this sport. Um, and I've gone from right to the bottom to right up there, so I've achieved a lot, um, and I live nice. I don't go to bed every night thinking, oh, he said this about me, or he said I'm shit. Um, oh, if I don't fight, if I don't fight this geezer next then he's gonna hate me even more. I don't, I don't think about that. I just, I just know what I've got to do. But it's not nice to see sometimes. But um, the way I look at it is. They don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but fans are entitled to, entitled to their opinions because obviously, you know, without fans, it's it, it's very hard in boxing. But um, that everyone's everyone's got their opinions, but it's just frustrating sometimes when I, when I get the blame, and there's other fighters out there, and you know, other champions and that who have been who were trying to make fights with and they've never materialised because of them. And I, I yet still get the blame. <laughs> Let's talk about that. You know, we briefly touched on you when I did first arrive. You know, some of the thoughts you have tried to make, which just never seemed to materialise. What what has been the case there? What just hasn't seemed to click when you've gone into negotiations with those guys? And who exactly are you referring to? Well, we like last year I boxed. I made my American debut. I boxed on the same card as uh, Jerwin and Carhas to, to, to make that fight. There was no need for me to fight on that card otherwise. The whole point, I think everyone could see that the winners fight each other. But um, just never inter not interested in the fight, just didn't want to know at all. And it's just like, it is frustrating. Um, another, another fight that was going to be made was me against Donny Nietzsche for the WBO title. That weren't no fault of his. That was me being injured. Um, we tried, obviously we both had mandatories coming up, so obviously we're trying to get a, di get a deal done to fight on, in April on the wrong side to ride a rematch, um, and then I hurt my right hand, and then we, f we thought we'd be able to just push it back just a little bit, but um, the WBO made sure that he had to defend against his mandatory, which ended up him just vacating the title. So, um, and I had my mandatory and I couldn't get out of that then, so yeah. It's a bit. It's been a bit, bit frustrating sometimes, but um, the way I think of it is just, I'm a, whatever's meant to be is meant to be, and just just go with the flow. So now you've held your world title for almost three years. The time has come now in, in your own mind from the sounds of it. You need those. You need a fight realistically in your next fight to be one of the big names, whether that's a unification fight or somebody like the Rung Vazois or Chocolatitos. That seems to be the direction that you need to, you're saying you need to go in for your next bout? Oh, 100%, 100%. Um, I need that for myself, to show everyone how good I am. You know, because I, bought, I won the world title. No, there's, there's a lot of people that didn't think I would beat the kid who I beat, um, and I beat him easy. And I need that, that next big name. Uh, Conception. Yeah. Conception, yeah. So now I need that, that big name. Um, and I, I'm no doubt that it will come next, no doubt at all, because that's all I'm going to fight. I, I don't want to fight anybody else. So, you know, I want to I wanna fight the guys that you mentioned, Estrada, Bung Vasari, Chocolatito, Ioka and Carhas. They're the only guys I really want to fight. So I know it's early doors yet, and you, you may not have even had the discussion with Eddie since you've been back in the UK, but what do you think is most realistic for yourself next with regards to those names? I think any of those fights can be made. So it's just it's just about sitting down with the team and sitting down um, and discussing it and seeing what, what options we have. Um, it's still early doors because I'm going to start punching today. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, hopefully my hands hold up today and we can get training again and look. hopefully in the next couple of weeks um, start looking at what's next.
we've seen Estrada sign with Eddie as well. Uh, Ed, Estrada's fighting on the weekend yeah, as well. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, we'll start off with that. What do you make of uh, Estrada's fight this coming Saturday? I don't know nothing about the guy. So I think it's one of them fights where he will look good in fighting at home. Um, so I think it, I think it'd be a good performance for him. And then with that fight, like I say, between yourself and maybe Estrada, now he signed with Eddie and Matt Drew a, a while back. How much easier is it going to be to try and make those fights, knowing that you're both under the same promotional banner? I think it'd be easier to make. Can't see why not. Um, yeah, so I can't see why not as Estrada. He, he, Eddie signed and he signed wrong side earlier in the year, so them fights they can. I think they should they should be able to make pretty easily. When would you like to be out next? Um, Any time between, I don't know, November, December, November, December, ideally. And obviously, you say that there, December 7th is the only fight which has been announced yet with regards to Joshua Ruiz in Saudi. I spoke to you again, spoke to you briefly when I got here, the Yemeni civil war going on out there. What do you make of it with regards to if you was to go out there, I know you're on Yemeni descent, yeah. Has that been of a concern to you? Um, not really, no, because they love the Saudis would love me out there. Um, I know Na, I know Naz got got a, got a really good reception out there, um, and I spoke to obviously my mum and that, so she knows a lot about what's going on out there as well, and um, she thinks it's a big big, be a big move for me, big move for my career, um, especially commercially, because you know there's not many. Here. Arab fighters out there at a high level, so you you know there's not how many can you can you name any big names apart from Kid Galahad, really? Um, there aren't many out there, so I think it'd be yeah could be could be a possibility. Something I'd have to chat to Eddie about. Would it be something that you'd like to do if a, if the opportunity was put to yourself then? Oh, 100 percent, yeah, it'd be great. Be another country ticked off. Um, obviously, I'd always I'd always I wanted to go to Saudi and I will go there one day, obviously. But um, but yeah, it'd be good to fight there. What did you make of the initial announcement then when Joshua Ruiz was stated for Saudi Arabia? A lot of British fans not happy about that because it seemed that all indications were it would be in Cardiff yeah. on December 14th and then that just never seemed to materialise in the end. So what was your initial reaction to when you heard Saudi Arabia? Um... Well, I, I knew anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> I knew anyway, so it went like a big shot. When you found out, find or out. when you found out originally, before everybody else, what was your reaction? Um, I, I thought I thought it was a mad place to go to, but I thought I'm, the first thing you think of is money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's you know, you know, it's there's Arab, it's Arabs, it's, there's oil, and there's everything out yeah. there. So um, the first thing you think is the first thing I thought was shit. They're gonna be getting paid some big money, man. But um, yeah, it's good and it's bad. But I can see the I can see the fans' point. You know what I mean with um with it going over there. Yeah. Um, but that's just the way it works sometimes. It's a, it's a business and people some people don't don't realise that. But I, I can see their frustrations. Yeah. It's been a lot of criticism as well in the sense of the lack of human rights over there, the way that women are treated, etc. If you as a British fan, that's considered travelling out there, would that be a, of a concern to you? Um, I don't think... The thing is, in Saudi, um, that's, you know, there's, there's Mecca there, and there's millions and millions of people from all over the world, different colours, male and female, go there every year, so... They all go there, they don't have any issues. So I don't see no, no, no big, big issue in that sense, but... There's people that want to go over from here and they're going to want to get on the session, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they ain't going to be able to. So, and they're going to have to be well behaved. I mean, with the area itself, it's like if you was to fight in New York, if you was to fight in anywhere in America, or if you was to fight over in the UK, in London, in uh, Cardiff, you've, you, everybody knows of the places and the things that you have to do. There seems to be a general feeling that maybe in Saudi Arabia there won't be as much to do in and around the cities in the build-up to fight week. 
what are your thoughts on it? What do you know of that there is to do out in Saudi? Eddie's mentioned there'll be events that are going to be put on during fight week, but just from gouging the initial reaction, a lot of fans aren't necessarily happy about the types of events that have been discussed. Yeah, um, yeah, there probably isn't gonna wouldn't probably be that many things to do, but I think they will be putting on a lot of things on around the fight. So I think purposely that they will be putting on big events ahead of the fight. So I don't see I don't see there'll be an issue with that. And the rematch itself. What are your thoughts on it? And if it wasn't to work out for AJ, where does he go on the back of that? Um, I don't really know. It's a difficult one, but I do. I'm confident in him winning the rematch. Um, having known what the kind of person he is, and know what he's obviously how he's going to be, how he's training leading up to it. Um, yeah, I'm very confident in him regaining his titles. But if he if he didn't, it's hard, really. Yeah, yeah, it is hard. Obviously, you lost twice on a bounce to him. Um, he can obviously come back because you know, Klitschko done it. Um, so he can definitely he can definitely come back. But it's a hard road back. But he's a he's a massive star. So yeah. when you when you when you a star like that, you can always come back. I just wanted to get your thoughts on a few other fights then, which are on the go at the minute. Yard Kovalev on Saturday night, it's brought the imagination of a lot of people kind of to the forefront now. Everybody's really excited to see it and how it plays out. What are your thoughts on it? It's a, it's a hard one because Yard hasn't really fought anybody. So he's going from fighting nobody to Kovalev. But then, on the other hand, he's big, he can punch. Um, He's obviously fresh and young, but Kovalev is a bit, I think, you know, he's had a tough career. So, if you're going to fight Kovalev, now's the best time to fight him. So, it, uh, he, can, he, can, he can win. I think it's a winnable fight, but I think, it, I think it's been made a bit tougher having to go to his backyard as well. And I don't think um, it would be a very friendly atmosphere. What's your prediction? I'm going to... I'm going to go with Kovalev, yeah. I'll go with Kovalev on points. Obviously, you just mentioned he's in his backyard as well, in his hometown of Chelyabinsk. Anthony Yard arriving last night, I, I said to you when I first got here, he arrived and the airline just didn't happen to have his luggage on arrival. Big yeah, that's so what I was about to say. <laughs> Those types of things can be a new experience for Anthony, a new experience for a lot of fighters who would uh, consider doing something like that and going into an away fighter's backyard. How would, how do you anticipate Anthony will try and deal with that? I don't know him personally, so I've I've never met him. But I'd, if it was me, I'd just keep cool and just think, you know what, it is what it is. They're playing games. I just gotta stay cool, deal with it, and then you know just do what I gotta do and get out of there. <laughs> if he was to be successful, how big of an upset is that in British boxing history? I think uh, it is a big upset, but. Um, I don't know, it's not like a like a big, big upset because he is getting on Kovalev and obviously you've heard the stories of how he lives. You know, he don't live the greatest outside the fight, so it's all gonna it all catches up with you one day. So I think um could be the night that it catches up with you. Tyson Fury's announced that he's going to face their face uh, Otto Wallin next yeah. a Swedish Hello. fighter. You know him. Know. What are your thoughts on that one? Um I think it's a Comfortable fight for Tyson. Um, I've met Otto, Otto, Otto. Otto yeah, yeah, Otto. Yeah, that's it. I do. I, I've I got him on Instagram and that. <laughs> um, but I remember he come over and sparred with, with uh, Big Josh okay. in Sheffield and that. So I was there. I was there when they were sparring. So he's not a bad fighter, mm -hmm. but I just think um, Tyson is just a bit too good for him. I watched uh, Anthony Joshua's documentary with Sky Sports, The Untold Truth. Um, I don't know whether you've seen it yourself yet. AJ mentioned the fact that he has fought Otto Wallin when he was an amateur. Okay. How much do you think can be read into the fact that maybe Tyson's fighting him now, whereas AJ fought him as an amateur and was successful when he fought him as an amateur? Um, no, you can't read too much into that because there's, there's guys that I've seen as amateurs and they've been beat by guys that are shit, basically. Yeah. 
and then they've gone on to be great pros. There's guys that beat me as an amateur, and now they're terrible. Or oh, they're not even boxing. So you can't really read much into that. Yeah. Another thing which AJ mentioned in the documentary, which even though if you may not have watched it, I'm sure you'd have heard about it, he called Lennox Lewis a clown. Yeah. What were your thoughts when you heard that? It's just, he's obviously, they've got a little thing going on. Um, he's obviously not liking something he said, so he's, he's entitled to call him whatever he wants, really. I know, I know... People, you know, will will give him stick for calling him a clown. Say you can't call him a clown. He's former undisputed champion. The way I look at it is, I don't care what you've done. If you're a clown to me, if you're a clown, you're a clown. If you say something wrong, but I don't even know exactly what he said, mm-hmm. unless you can tell me what he said. <laughs> is it, uh, Lennox or AJ? Lennox. Because I I haven't really been in, you know keeping my head around it all lately, so. I think he was all just dating back to a variety of things from when the AJ Wilder rematch, uh, sorry, not rematch, the Wilder AJ uh, fight wasn't able to be finalised and a variety of just other things which just accumulated to Lennox giving his opinion on certain aspects which I don't think AJ agreed with. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've seen a few things before where it, it kind of looks like he's got something against Josh, you know what I mean? But it, it, you, you just don't know. You, you can't call it, oh, he's hating on him. You can't really say he's hating on him or, or he's jealous of him because he's, he's done it all, hasn't he? He's done it all. He's a brilliant fighter. He's one of the best heavyweights he's got probably ever. He's a brilliant heavyweight. Um, so you can't really say, you know, he's hating on him. Uh, he's jealous of him. Made a good living, you know. He can do what he wants, can't he? So, yeah, I don't know if it's just something he's not liking about him. Probably wanted. I think he wanted training when he when he first turned pro, and he probably he, because he never done that. He's probably not yeah. liking that. So you just don't know. But I don't really look into into that much. Obviously, Josh knows more what's got, gone on. So, but he's entitled to call him what he wants, really. Finally, a couple of things family related. Gamal Yafoy, your brother, back in camp once again. <laughs> he's had a bit of a torrid time over the past year or so with injuries. What's Gamal looking like now? He's back. Yeah, he's looking good. Um, he's he's had the he's had very bad luck. All right, boxed on the Khan show in Birmingham last September, tore his bicep in that fight, had operation, and then a week before on the fight week where he was meant to fight in Italy, yeah. um, tore his bicep in his last fight on the week of the fight, end of the first round. He couldn't make it up really. Had another had another operation on the other bicep. So now he's got two biceps fully repaired. So, that, you know, touch wood, they shouldn't go again. <laughs> but, he's, he's, he, you know, it's been a hard time for him, yeah. Because it'd be a hard time for anyone having, having to take a year out and you get injured in a fight, you win the fight, and then you have the operation. You've got to go through all the recovery process, the rehab, get back in, you get into great nick, and then you got to, and on the week of the fight, you do the other arm. It's just you couldn't make it off. Like it, it is heartbreaking, but um, I think the only positive you can take from it is he's got more time to spend with his son because he's, he, he's, his son has just turned one, so it's given him time to to do that and um, and to appreciate things more in life. And a younger brother of yours, Galal Yafoy, making it onto the world championship squads out in Russia in September. Excited for him, proud of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's come a long way in a short period of time. He's not one of these kids that started boxing when he was seven or eight. He started when he was like sixteen or seventeen. So um, the only naturally gifted fighter of the family, because <laughs> he just he was good from the beginning where we were shit. Um, he's done he's done he's done really well, and um, he's gone up for weight now. So he's gone up to fly weight, um, and he's looking like a little beast. So um, yeah, keep an eye on him. He'll be um, he'll be hopefully going to the to the Olympics next year, and um, hopefully bring him back a medal and turn him pro. Well, Kyle Foy, as always, it's been a pleasure, and I appreciate your time. And thanks, Beats Boxing Social. Anytime, anytime.